as Aurelio said, I'm going to talk about the, the origin of the Milnor Fabrician theorem, which is a very important theorem in singularity theory. So I will start speaking about exotic spheres. So uh, as all of us know, uh, the standard N sphere or sphere of dimension N is the set of points in the Euclidean space of dimension N plus one, which uh, uh, of a distance one to the origin, no, yeah, or, or the points which satisfies this equation. No, for instance, the standard one sphere, which is the circle, or the standard two sphere, no, is okay. And this is uh, this mathematical object is a topological space, and also is a smooth manifold. Uh, I want to say that a topological n sphere is a topological space which is homeomorphic to the standard n sphere. For instance, uh, this is a topological one sphere, it's known as the Koch snowflake. It, it is one of the earlier fractals. It was constructed by Koch in this article on a continuous curve without tangents, constructible from elementary geometry. And it is not diffeomorphic to S1 because this curve is not differentiable, no? As it says, it doesn't have any tangent at any point. And also another definition, a homotopy N sphere is an N manifold, which is homotopically equivalent to the standard N sphere. And a homological N sphere is an N manifold, which has the homology of the standard sphere, okay? So we have three kinds of sphere, a topological sphere, homotopy N sphere and homology N sphere. And well, this, uh, this is the famous Poincare conjecture. In 1900, Poincare claimed that homology characterized the three manifolds homeomorphic to the, the three dimensional sphere. So, in other words, he said that every homology three sphere is homeomorphic to the standard three sphere. But four years later, uh, Poincaré himself constructed a contraexample. No? He constructed a three manifold, which is the quotient of the standard uh, three dimensional sphere by some finite subgroup, which is called the binary icosahedral group. And this uh, smooth manifold, uh, this uh, manifold, three manifold, is called now the Poincaré homology sphere because it has the homology of the three sphere, but uh, its fundamental group is this finite group called the binary icosahedral group. It's called uh, like this because it projects into the group of uh, rotations of uh, icosahedron in the in, in the Euclidean tree space. And then Poincaré asked, no, which is the famous Poincaré conjecture, that if you have a, a closed tree manifold V, if it's possible that the fundamental group is zero, even though it's not homeomorphic to S3. No? And well, now we know the answer. And uh, well, what I, we, I put here in this slide is the generalized Poincare conjecture, which says that the following three statements are equivalent. A closed N manifold M is homeomorphic to the standard N sphere. M is a homotopy N sphere, or M has the homology of an fundamental group of the uh, standard N sphere. In other words, it's a homology N sphere plus the fundamental group, trivial fundamental group. And for dimensions one and two, these are, they are very classical results. And then uh, for dimension five or bigger, Smale, Stallings, and Seaman prove this, this uh, theorem. Uh, for n equal four, Friedman proved the theorem. And the last uh, case to be proven was the original Poincare conjecture in dimension three, uh, as we know, by Perelman. No? Uh, so these uh, uh, theorems tell us when an N manifold is homeomorphic to the standard N sphere. Now, 
remember that also the standard in the sphere is a smooth manifold no so we can ask which smooth n manifolds are now diffeomorphic to the n sphere we are moving to the now to the uh, differential category no not, not only the topological ones so for instance if we take smooth knots no in in three space these are diffeomorphic to the circle to the standard one sphere and if uh, this manifold and the standard and sphere are dif diffeomorphic, th then they are homeomorphic. And uh, now it's natural to ask the converse. No? If, if um, a n manifold and the standard and sphere are homeomorphic, are they diffeomorphic? The question is reasonable because we have the following lemma. Any homeomorphism no, between an n manifold and the n sphere can be uniformly approximated by smooth maps. So the question is, if a, a, a given homeomorphism can be always approximated by a diffeomorphism? Well, this uh, question was answered by Milner in 1956. He gave a negative answer constructing the first exotic spheres. These are smooth seven manifolds, which are homeomorphic to the the standard seven sphere, but with non-equivalent differentiable structures. So as a differentiable manifold, they are not equivalent, they are not diffeomorphic, but uh, as topological spaces, they are, they are homeomorphic, the sphere and the, these manifolds. And well, these, how are these manifolds? They are sphere bundles of four plane bundles over the, the, the sphere of dimension four. So in other words, every point, the, the inverse image of every point in S4 is a three-dimensional sphere. And these uh, uh, seven manifolds are boundaries of the corresponding this bundle, no? which I, I denoted here by E8, which has dimension eight. And these sphere bundles or, or these bundles are classified by elements of this uh, fourth uh, homotopy group of this classifying space of SL, of the group SO4, which is isomorphic to two copies, the direct sum of two copies of the integers. No? So in other words, these, these uh, spaces are classified by two integers. And well, so how uh, uh, that did Milner prove that they are homeomorphic to the standard seven sphere? Well, he used this, uh, this sphere theorem by Rep, which says the following. If we take an n-dimensional smooth closed manifold, if we can find a Morse function with only two critical points, then this manifold is topological, a topological n-sphere. In other words, it's homeomorphic to the standard n-sphere. So what Miller did is find he found a, a, a most function with only two critical points for these uh, manifolds. When uh, Milner did this, uh, this generalized Poincaré conjecture was not proved. So, but now we can use it, and it's a, a, a easier way to to prove that these manifolds uh, given by Milner are homeomorphic to the standard seven sphere. Now, uh, he had to disprove that they are diffeomorphic and he used the following he used a, a formula by Hirzebruch which is called Hirzebruch signature formula is this equality given here for a smooth close oriented eight manifold no and well this number this sigma of m8 and p1 of m8 and p2 of m8 are the following invariants of this eight dimensional manifold sigma is the signature of the intersection form. The intersection form is a uh, bilinear form given by in the homology groups of middle dimension of dimension four. And P1 and P2 are the uh, so-called Pontragin numbers, which are characteristic numbers uh, given in terms of Pontragin classes, no? characteristic classes of the manifold. So if we have a um, smooth close oriented a manifold, we, uh, these numbers satisfy this equality. Okay, now 
uh, suppose that this uh, manifold that Milner studied, no, this uh, sphere bundles, I suppose that they are diffeomorphic to the standard seven sphere. So choose a diffeomorphism. And using this diffeomorphism, we can uh, paste a disk no, uh, the, of dimension eight, which has the sphere uh, of dimension seven as a boundary to this, uh, the, uh, this bundle E8 to obtain a smooth closed eight manifold. No, It's just this a new eight manifold is the union of this E8 and a, a disk. And one con can compute the signature and the first point dragging number. And, and if we make this quotient, we can see that it is not an integer. But by Hirschberg's signature formula, it should be P2, but P2 is an integer. So that means our original assumption that this sigma 7 is diffeomorphic to the standard 7 sphere was false. So it cannot be diffeomorphic. No? So in this way, he found that these manifolds were homeomorphic to the standard 7 sphere, but not diffeomorphic to them. So that's why they are called exotic spheres, because they are uh, topological manifolds which have differentiable structure, which is different from the standard seven sphere, even though they are homeomorphic. Now, there were uh, other uh, exotic spheres later discovered. L let you be the tangent disk bundle of the n dimensional standard sphere. And we denote by W the 2n smooth manifold obtained by plumbing two copies of this tangent this bundle this plumbing is like this you take two copies and you like to put them like transverse and you identify in a neighborhood the base with the fiber uh, with the fiber and the base of the other copy no? and the boundary of this uh, manifold obtained by plumbing no because it's a manifold with boundary is a smooth 2n minus 1 manifold homeomorphic to the standard 2n minus 1 sphere. And these are called Kerber spheres because Kerber is the one who constructs them. And for n equal 5, the Kerber sphere K9 is an exotic n, a 9 sphere. No? So Kerber now found all exotic sphere of dimension 9. And uh, he took this uh, manifold W10, which has as a boundary K, and uh, he glued the cone over K to this uh, manifold W, and he obtained a manifold, which I denote here by N, which does not admit any differentiable structure. So it's a topological manifold, but it doesn't have any differentiable structure. I, uh, actually, it does not have the homotopy type of any differentiable manifold. No? So it's a very strange example. So as we can see, we can have topological manifolds with many different differentiable structures, as in the, 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 the sphere of the dimension 7 or 8 or 9. But we also can have uh, topological manifolds which does not admit any differentiable structure. Okay, now, uh, well, uh, Milner found uh, exotic spheres of dimension seven, and he found different several. No, so the question is, how many we, uh, different uh, uh, differential structures can we find in in uh, in the, the, the sphere of dimension seven? So to do that, take S n the equivalence classes of smooth structures of the n sphere. No? And this is a monoid with the following operation. The operation is the connected sum. And well, this is, is illustrated by this uh, picture. What you do is in, in each of the manifolds, you remove one uh, ball of dimension n. The, the boundary are the spheres. And then you identify this, the spheres and you get a new manifold, which is called the connected sum. And uh, with this operation, this a set of equivalence classes of smooth structures on the sphere is a monoid. And we also have a theorem by Ismail, you know, it's a, a, a concept which is 
if we have a cover this W between two n-dimensional smooth manifolds M and N, we say that is an H coverdism, no? The H uh, meaning homotopy equivalence. If the inclusion maps uh, of M in W and N in W as the boundaries are homotopy equivalences, and then we say that M and N are H covordant. The theorem by Ismail says that if you have two homotopy N spheres with dimensions different from three and four, they are H covordant if and only if they are diffeomorphic. Okay, so this in, for for dimensions different from three and four, uh, a characterization of that two homotopy N spheres are diffeomorphic is that they are H covordant. So instead of uh, study diffeomorphism, we are going to study H covordism. So now what we can look at to the monoid of H covordism classes of homotopy spheres. So for the n different from four, this monoid of the differentiable structures in the spheres is isomorphic to the monoid of H covordism classes of homotopy n spheres. Uh, remember, uh, we exclude uh, dimension three before, but now by Perelman's proof of Poincare conjecture, we also have that the monod S3 is isomorphic to the monod theta three. So, and the monod S4 is still an open problem. We don't know anything about it. So, Kerber and Milner studied this monoid of H covariance classes of uh, homotopy N spheres. And uh, they, they prove that it's actually a finite abelian group. And uh, it contains a preferred group, they denoted by B, BP. It, it consists of those homotopy spheres that bound a parallelizable manifold. No, that's why the BP bounds boundary parallelizable. That is a manifold with trivial tangent bond. And they prove that this subgroup is a finite cyclic group with finite index in the group theta n. So the structure of this subgroup is as follows. It is trivial if n is even, has order one or two for n congruent with one modulo four, being generated by the Kerber sphere. And is a set two, in, in other words, the Kerber sphere is exotic, as in case dimension nine, as I said before, if n is congruent with one modulo eight. No? He, of course, nine is one of these cases. And for n congruent with three modulo four, well, we have that n plus one can be written as four times m for some integer m bigger than one. And the order of this group grows exponentially or more than exponentially no? with this formula, where these numbers b are the famous Bernoulli numbers. So for instance, we have here for seven, Dimension seven, we have 28 uh, classes. For a sphere of dimension 11, we have 992. 15, we have, we have 8,128, and so forth. No, it's increasing, increasing a lot. So, well, in the case of Milner, the, the discovery of Milner, well, we can see that we have 28 different differentiable structures in the sphere of dimension seven. Okay, so. Until here, this is the discovery of the exotic spheres. And uh, now I'm going to talk the relation with the theory of singularities. So first of all, I want to define the link of an isolated singularity. So take a complex analytic variety of dimension n in the complex uh, n-dimensional space with an isolated singularity at a point p. Then if I remove the point, the singularity, the complement is a complex N manifold. And a proposition, you know, which is called the, the conical structure of the, of the singularity, there exists a radius sufficient, a positive radius sufficiently small, so that the sphere with this, uh, of, of radius r, which are is smaller than epsilon and center in p, meets this uh, complex manifold b star transversely. So, so then the intersection will be a manifold, 
which is called the link of the singularity P, and it's a smooth real analytic manifold of dimension 2n minus 1. Okay, so to each isolated singularity, we can associate a smooth manifold, which is called the link. So the, the picture is like this. We have here in, in, in the, the analytic variety, this is the isolated singularity. We have the, take this, this sphere centered in the singularity, intersects transversely in, in this link, the, the singular variety. Okay, so Monfort, uh, well, prove the following term, but first for when the dimension is one, the, the links are just union of circles, and for each for each branch of the of the of the singular variety, and it, it is a knot or link in the three dimensional sphere. For dimension two, in 1961, Monfort proved that if V has a normal singularity at the point P, then the link is never simply connected. So it cannot have the homotopy type of the three-dimensional sphere. Okay, in other words, for dimension two, the, the standard sphere cannot be the, the link of a singularity, no? Okay, but later in 1966, Briscorn proved that if uh, B is given by this equation, no? Uh, we have n, uh, n plus one variables. The first one is to the third power and the rest is to the second power. And the number of variables is uh, bigger or equal than three and odd. He proved that this uh, variety has a, an isolated singularity at the origin and that the link is homomorphic to the, to the standard sphere of dimension two n minus one. So this proof that for dimension higher than two, there is not an analogous of Monfort theorem. So, uh, and, and then this um, attracted the, the, the interest of the topologists because since now uh, in these links can, can be homomorphic to the spheres, the, 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 the question was if the differential structure was the, the standard one or exotic differential structures okay so so the, the people start looking for exotic spheres in these links of complex hypersurfaces so take a holomorphic function from the complex space of dimension n plus one with an isolated critical point no? and if we take the inverse image of zero this is an analytic variety with an isolated singularity at the origin and as before, denote by LV the link of the singularity. So the main question is, can we know when this link is a homotopy sphere? And if it is the case, can we determine which element of this uh, group of differentiable structures is represent? Okay, so the first exotic spheres uh, as links of isolated singularities were discovered by Hirsebrook, who combined results by Briscorn and Jenig. Briscorn and Jenig were uh, PhD students of Hirsebrook. And uh, Hirsebrook proved that if we, you take the singularity given by this equation, no, with n and d odd, the, the link is a homotopy sphere. And in particular, if we take three d equal three and, and the rest two, this is exactly the nine-dimensional exotic Kerber sphere. Okay, so he recovered the Kerber sphere as the link of these singularities. And inspired by the Briscoe result, Milner, in a letter to Nash, considered um, a more general case. He considered the hypersurfaces given by these equations, and he conjectured which of them were links of uh, the, the links were spheres, uh, homomorphic to spheres. And uh, on the other hand, FAM, he was motivated by applications to the theory of elementary particles, studied these smooth complex hypersurfaces, as you can see, is the same equation, but instead of being equal to zero, is now equal to one, no? 
and he computed the homotopy type of these smooth uh, complex hypersurfaces, the intersection form, and the monodromy. And these computations were exactly the ingredients that allow Briscorn to prove the conjecture by Milner. So uh, one of the Briscorn results is the following theorem. Every exotic sphere of dimension m equal to n minus 1, bigger than 6, that bounds a parallelizable manifold is the link of some hypersurface singularity of the form as, as described before for some appropriate integers ai, no? bigger than or equal than 2. And as a particular case of this theorem, uh, he proved that the singularity given by this equation is a 4m minus 1 sphere and is in this uh, subgroup of the, of the group of uh, uh, h coverism classes of, of homotopy spheres. If we take m equal to 2 and k from 1 to 28, we recover the 28 classes of 7 spheres. And if we take m equal to 3 and k from 1 to 992, we obtain the 992 classes of 11 spheres. So uh, this theorem recovers all these classes of exotic spheres, but now as links of isolated singularities. And then, well, remain the, the question in general, no? for which uh, if you give a, a map no? and, uh, which defines a hypersurface, a complex hypersurface with an isolated singularity, when the link is a, a sphere homology uh, uh, homomorphic to a sphere well here is where a uh, milner vibration theorem enters so this is milner vibration theorem it says that you take you have the map f no Hol a holomorphic map sorry map and if you you, you take the, the sphere and remove the link and divide it by the modulus of the of the of the map you get a map from the the complement of the dealing kick in the sphere to the circle. And this is a smooth fiber bundle. No? And the fiber of this fiber bundle is diffeomorphic to the portion of a pre-image of, of, of a regular value of, of, of the map no? with uh, theta is t over its modules. And it's contained in the ball bounded by the sphere. So the picture is like this. Here we have the singular variety, and this is uh, this here is the, the fiber of the Milner vibration, and we take a near, near a, a regular nearby fiber. So this this part of the Milner fiber or the fiber of Milner vibration is diffeomorphic to this portion of the pre-image of the regular value t. No? So Studying the, the, the fiber of the Milner vibration is, is the same as studying this part of, the, of this fiber of the map. And thus, uh, the normal bundle of this fiber is trivial because it's the inverse image of a regular value. This implies that the tangent bundle is stably trivial, that means it's stably parallelizable. And for compact connected manifolds with non-empty boundary, stably parallelizable implies parallelizable. So that means that the, mil, the fibers of the Milner vibration are parallelizable manifolds. And the link, the proposition is that the link of every complex hypersurface isolated singularity bounds the fiber of the Milner vibration, which are parallelizable manifolds. Okay, so if this uh, links are homomorphic to spheres, then it, it, we will we, we, we'll have a class of, 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 on this group of diffeomorphic classes of exotic spheres. So the, the, the goal now is to, to see when these links are homotopy spheres, no? And then when they are, to see which element represents in this subgroup of differentiable structures. Okay, so Milner proved the following, that the fiber of the Milner vibration has the homotopy type of a bouquet of spheres of dimension n, 
¿no? the middle dimension, and the number of, of spheres in the bouquet is strictly positive unless B has no singularity. And now this number is called the Milner number as is a very important invariant in singularity theory. And he also did computations in the homology of the link. The link of every isolated hypersurface is n minus two connected. And for dimension bigger than two, the link is simply connected and using the Hurevich isomorphism, the homology of the link is zero in dimensions from one to n minus two. And since the link is orientable by Poincaré duality, also the homology in dimensions n plus one up to uh, to n minus two is also zero. Thus, the only possible non-zero groups, uh, homology groups, are in dimensions n and n minus one. Well, of course, in dimension zero and the top dimension, they are isomorphic to the group of integers or the corresponding coefficients. So if the group of dimension n minus one vanishes, then the group of dimension n also vanishes by duality. And it, that implies, you know, since the homology will be zero, that is a homology sphere, because we said that for dimension n bigger than two is simply connected. Okay, so uh, by the generalized Poincaré conjecture, it will be, the link will be homeomorphic to the 2n minus 1 sphere, uh, uh, standard sphere. So the question to decide if the link is a, a homomorphic to the sphere or not is to see when this group of homology vanishes. And here is where the uh, Milnos Fabrician theorem is used. So for this, uh, we take the Milnos Fabrician as before. And the monodromy is the first return map. What is this? Take a, a fiber of the vibration and take the unit tangent vector field in the circle, no? in the in the in the in the codomain, and lift this vector vector field to the sphere. This will give a diffeomorphism for for each time between the sphere minus the link to itself. No, such that, that at time t sends the, the fiber over theta to the fiber over theta plus t. Now, if we take uh, the fiber over zero, which is the same as the fiber over two pi, no, then the geometric monodromy will be the diffeomorphism from this fiber to itself. And the monodromy is the, indu the induced uh, isomorphism in use in homology, in the in, in the end homology. So with this uh, monodromy map, uh, we can define this uh, characteristic polynomial or the monodromy, which is the determinant of this uh, monodromy map minus t times the identity map, the identity uh, homomorphism in homology. And we have um, the following exact sequence, which is called the one sequence of the Milner fabrication, where here is given the, the first map is precisely this monodromy minus the identity. Okay. And uh, by the exactness of the, of the sequence, this group will be zero if and only if this map is an isomorphism. And it is an isomorphism if and only if the determinant is plus or minus one. And by Alexander and Poincaré dualities, we have that this homology group of the complement of the link in the sphere is isomorphic to the group we, we were looking for, for the n minus one homology group of the link. So the, the theorem by Milner is that if the dimension is different from two, the link is a topological sphere if and only if the, the, the characteristic polynomial of the monodromy evaluated in one is plus or minus one. Now, so, so this is the, the characterization of when the link is a, a topological sphere. Now we need to know to which elements in the, in the, 
in the subgroup of uh, diffeomorphism classes of the sphere it represents. Since the link bounds an n minus one connected parallelizable manifold, which is the, the fiber of the minimal vibration, it is its diffeomorphism class is in this subgroup and is completely determined by the signature of the intersection form of the fiber of the Milner vibration in the case when the dimension is even and by the Kerber invariant which is um, an element of Z2 if n is odd when n is odd a theorem by Levin uh, tells us that the, this Kerber invariant is given in terms of this characteristic polynomial we saw before the 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 Kerber invariant is zero if the characteristic polynomial evaluated in minus one is congruent with plus or minus one modulo eight. And the Kerber invariant is one if this characteristic polynomial evaluated again in minus one is congruent with plus or minus three modulo eight. So in so with these two invariants, we can know which element in this group is. No? So then the, the question for the when can we find exotic spheres in the links of uh, isolated complex isolated singularities uh, uh, was answered in this way and uh, to situate Milner's vibration theorem in singularities i, I want to quote uh, uh, the this article by jose seade on Milner's vibration theorem and its offspring after 50 years and it says the following Milner's vibration theorem is a landmark on singularity theory it allowed to deepen the study of the geometry and topology of analytic maps near their critical points. After 50 years, this has become a whole area of research in its own, with a vast literature, plenty of different viewpoints, a large progeny, and connections with many other branches of mathematics. So for instance, by Milner's Federation theorem, the links of complex plane curves are fiber knots or links. Together with the link, uh, the Milner vibration gives to the sphere of dimension 2n plus 1 with an open book structure. And this has connections with contact geometry. Now, if we take a family of complex hypersurface of dimension different from 2 with isolated, isolated critical point, the invariance of the Milner number implies the invariance of the topological type of the singularity. And the case when the dimension is Two is still open, and this is a famous uh, conjecture called the Le Ramanujan conjecture. And there are many more examples of the importance of the Milner Fabrician theorem in singularity theory. But that's another story for another talk. Thank you very much.